being a series about a post-pandemic apocalypse, you kind of expect The Last of Us to have a ton of visual effects. And you'd be right, but some of those effects were probably not quite those you'd have imagined. Now obviously digital matte paintings were necessary to extend or replace backgrounds to create this post-apocalyptic world, and roads had to be made to look poorly maintained and overrun by nature. Infrastructure had to look tired and weather-worn, buildings had to look abandoned and corroded, and plants had to look like they were reclaiming what was once theirs. And of course, modern-day items had to be removed as well. Signs had to be removed or made to look damaged. Bridges had to look unusable. In short, decomposition and abandonment had to be woven into almost every shot. And up to here, it's all fairly run-of-the-mill, but it turns out that even though, through the use of practical effects, prosthetics and clever location selection, the filmmakers attempted to do everything practically due to aesthetics, technicalities and just plain bad luck, they still had to use digital effects. To shoot the scene where Joel finds his brother Tommy in a village filled with survivors, they wanted it to be covered in snow, so they picked Canmore in Alberta, Canada, a place known for its prolific snowfall. But when the team arrived at the location, there was very little snow. This was especially devastating because they couldn't use fake snow, paper or dolomite because it would affect the natural environment. So the production team had to collect real snow which had built up in drifts around the town and move it in 350 dump trucks to cover 10 city blocks. Then all this real snow had to be spread about, dressed and blown everywhere. But even though they tried to use real snow wherever possible, it just wasn't enough. So for Joel and Ellie's journey to Colorado, additional CG snow and digital dirt and debris had to be added to the existing snow, in addition to the colour grading to give the shots a colder feel. To recreate the iconic giraffe scene, they actually used a real giraffe, but for the establishing shot, in order to allow them to be able to direct the action, the giraffes had to be CG, and even when they were using the real giraffe, they still had to set up a blue screen wall at the zoo where the giraffe was in order to control how far it could move its head. Because of this, the giraffe's body and neck had to be recreated later digitally. This was also true for the scene where Ellie shoots the horse. Even though they built a practical horse to accomplish the stunt, in order to have it fall and get its legs to move convincingly, it had to be replaced with a digital one. But perhaps the most unexpected use of VFX was for the infected themselves. Barry Gower and his team at BGFX worked to create the infected characters. Starting with concept artwork from the original game, they made prosthetics for each stage of infected characters and a full body suit for the bloater. The bulk of this work was for the cul-de-sac scene, where, over eight days, they had 60 characters in prosthetic makeup, plus the bloater. Because the prosthetics were all made out of silicone, every single day they needed to be removed and destroyed with mineral oil. The following day, a brand new duplicate set of prosthetics were applied and painted to match exactly those of the day before. But once again, even though they did as much as possible practically, they still had to use digital effects. The practical bloater suit was hyper-realistic, but it was also cumbersome and heavy too. So not only did it bounce and wobble in an unconvincing manner, but it also impeded the actor from moving in a convincing way. So the bloater suit had to be scanned and then recreated digitally using the actor's mocap performance to aid animation. The clicker prosthetics were designed to fit over the actor's head, but they couldn't look like a helmet. While they achieved this for the adult clickers, due to proportions, the child clicker, which was played by nine-year-old gymnast Sky Newton, just looked like she was wearing a helmet. So she also had to be a digital recreation. Initially, they were only going to do a head replacement, but they soon realised that it was difficult to tell whether she was a child or just a small adult, so in order to sell the fact that she was indeed just a child, they replaced the whole body, adjusted her proportions, and added the pigtail. The actors playing the clickers that erupted from the hole may have been close to 60, but they still weren't enough to create the horde effect that they were looking for. So they scanned one and built a digital asset that they could make different variations of all based on a real thing. They used motion capture for the crowd motion, but the horde of infected ended up being a mixture of live action, animation, keyframing, motion editing, and simulation from Witter's crowd simulation tool, Massive. 
Series that are based on well-known franchises, books or video games are generally made in order to cash in on their already existent fan base. But series like The Last of Us are successful not because they are made for the fans, but because they are made by fans who aren't afraid to adjust or modify whatever they have to in order to better tell the story.